Tacticos, we're back with the Ask RG, of course, the one you love so much and we love so much too. So we're gonna read some of the best questions we have received in the last week and Ashley's gonna read them. I'm gonna try to reply them with her and uh, let's see if we can do it sufficiently, as Ashley says. If you haven't liked or subscribed yet, you know what to do and uh, wow, I'm very excited. Yes, let's get let's into go. it. Let's go, it's kinda cold. It's freezing. Let's go with our first question from Amara Hanif. Do you think in order for us to be a more consistent team, we need a central defensive midfielder like Everati, Matic, or even Pogba, so it's more balanced out like Busquets is for Barcelona? Uh, well, that's a very good question, and my answer is yes. I think I've been saying this for a number of weeks, maybe months, that I would love to see Berratti and Pogba in Real Madrid because they are players that have a lot of strength to recover the ball quickly, pressure up high, but then also they have the talent to move it intelligently and, you know, and to give it to a guy who's wearing the same shirt. <laughs> Which seems to be, you know, a problem we have when we're pressure up high. So I do think it's a good question, especially Berratti. I don't know about Matic so much, but Berratti and Pogba, I would love to have it in Real Madrid. As would I, and I do think, just touching on this um, defensive center midfielder, I do think that we need a player like that. Whether it's Casemiro, I think Cross is great, but he's a little bit more attacking, and if we had someone in that holding position, it would allow Cross or Modric or whoever's playing to roam freer. To roam freer, to mm -hmm. free him up from that defensive uh, responsibility. Great so question. yeah, it's a good question. Berratti and Pogba, I would love to see that. He loves Berratti. Okay, moving on. From Amar. No, that was just the one I just read, sorry. Uh, EO Jr. What happened to the curls, Ashley? They're, They're back. back. <laughs> They're back. But what happened when they were not here? Uh, I straightened my hair. It's a girl thing. She was going on a date. I was going on a date. Okay. How did they go? Let's not go into that. <laughs> okay, sorry. next one from Mr. Boston Bruins. First off, Thank you for including my question last time. You're welcome. Uh, how is the overall vibe of fans when it comes to Bale? I mean, I know they weren't too happy for the most of the se last season, but now that he's doing good recently, are Madridistas content with him? Can they fathom the fact that he will be the torchbearer once CR7 retires? Aba Madrid! That's a good question, and uh, I gotta tell you, uh, number one, the whole Madridismo thing is a very dangerous concept. We're not trying to hold here the voice of the Madridismo. I could say Vitali's Madridismo or Ashley's Madridismo, but we're not, you know, carrying the torch of the whole Madridismo. So that's a dangerous concept. But I'm gonna say my impression is there's mixed feelings about Bale because Bale has been on and off. And when he's on, he's, he's like on, on fire. Yeah. And when he's off, he's just like, well, not playing. So <laughs> my personal sensation is I would love to see Bale fit for, you know, for a continued amount of time, maybe, you know, three or four months in a row. And I think if that happened, we would see an amazing player. Bale is an amazing player. About bearing the torch uh, from Cristiano, I don't know. That's a very big and heavy torch to bear. <laughs> uh, and, but he doesn't need to do that to be a Real Madrid legend and, and to be worth what we paid for him and we, what we have expecting from him. But yeah, that's my feeling. You know, when Bale is on fire, I love him, but you know, it's very on and off. Yeah, and I love Bale personally, and I can't speak for all Madridistas, but what I do hear from Madridistas here is that they, they feel like what we've paid for him, we're not getting out of his play. And partly that has to do with the amount of injuries he's seen yeah. in the last, in the seasons that he's been here. So, I mean, I don't know. I love Bale when he's on, when he's not injured, when he's healthy, and like you said, uh, carrying the torch of Cristiano, maybe that won't be his call, but I think he still will be a great player if he can manage to get healthy <laughs> and yeah. stay healthy. And the other thing with Bale is, it's not like he's 22 or 23 right. anymore. So if he's gonna do that, like, it better happen soon. <laughs> Moving on. From, let's see, Mohamed Abdel Salam, who, speaking of Cristiano Ronaldo, is the next Cristiano Ronaldo in your opinion? Uh, it's gonna hurt me to say this, but I think uh, it'll be Neymar. I think it'll be Neymar. Yeah, probably the next very kind of like already getting in there. Neymar, I saw Barca's game last night and Neymar is, is playing at a level. But honestly, to be, on, to be very honest, I didn't think that would happen when he came first to Spain. I think it was gonna be more of a Robinho, mm -hmm. like a Brazilian flop, you know, a dribbler and everything, but he wouldn't mature into a solid player like he is right now. And I think, yeah, that's my answer, Neymar. I don't know, people are gonna kill me if I say the same thing about Neymar. I know he's in, in enemy territory, but if we're looking at purely, talking about a player and footballistically, Neymar is young, he's got the talent, he's scoring goals, he's succeeding in this league. Uh, yeah. Anyways. Hopefully it will be Isco or James, but I think it will be Neymar. Okay. Uh, from Bendova. Bendova! <laughs> Bend over, I'm gonna bend over for the cold, it's starting to rain here. But we are warriors, we don't care. 
Are you purposely not answering my questions? The answer to that question is no. No, <laughs> no we like your questions. Please keep them coming. You keep asking about Odegaard. We're gonna... We're gonna answer that. Yeah. We will. We I will. Promise. Soon. <laughs> <laughs> okay, from um, Amir of Duify. Amir Duify! Okay. Welcome back, my friend. Is the 442 the best fit for Madrid? And because we do have a lot of good midfielders and we need to use them wisely. Yeah, but we also have a, lo a lot of attackers and we need to use them wisely too. I think it's a good question. My personal answer is we need to have a 4-4-2 well organized when we're off the ball and a 4-3-3 when we're on the ball. And we can get that, those two systems to work and transition fast from one another from, you know, when we have the ball and when we don't. I think that's what Madrid should do. Um, okay. I just think talking about or focusing too much on a formation really isn't that big of an issue. I think it depends. I mean, nowadays they play in formations that are always changing and the roles are changing, like you said, defensively 4-4-2, offensively a 4-3-3. Um, I think it also depends on the players that we have and how the players are playing at the moment. So, I don't know. Uh, but it's true yeah. that 4-4-2, it's, uh, you know, it's been maybe less used, but when it's been used, it's been more successful for us. But again, as Ashley says, it's because of the players we have and specific characteristics of, of the game as well, like right. what the rival who's, is doing. Who your rival is. And especially, I mean, if you're playing a 4-4-2, Purely, and we're not changing the system offensively, defensively. I think we need to have two strikers that work well off of each other. Exactly. Um, if we don't have that, four, five, one. <laughs> okay. Um, from Suresh, will Zidane have the power with politics to sort the team out next year, especially with Ronaldo, or will it be the same next season? If you had asked this question five weeks ago, I would have <laughs> said yes, Zidane and everything. But now. I'm not really feeling very, very confident about this. I think this political problems inside the club and how the club is being run, uh, I mean, are not gonna disappear with Zidane. Maybe he'll have a little bit more hand hmm. in, you know, like maybe who he wants in the team and signing players and getting rid of players, but I don't think it's gonna be the revolution that, you know, basically all Madridistas are expecting. Yeah, I mean, I think definitely Zidane will have a little, in my personal opinion, and I really, who knows, I, I'm not an expert nor a journalist. But I feel like Zidane will get a little bit more leeway mm -hmm. from Florentino having been a Real Madrid legend uh, than another coach maybe would have gotten. Um, will he be able mm -hmm. to sort out the problems politically? Those things, if, they, if those players continue to exist in the team and obviously the people, the directors continue to exist, I don't see these problems going away like you said. Yeah. Oh, it's starting That's to rain. We gotta do the last question because it's starting to rain. Yeah, we need to leave. Okay, so from Real Madrid Gladiator, what a cool name. Do you think that there is a competition going on for getting playing time between Jose and Lucas for an attacking substitute. Who do you think has a better chance under Zidane and why? I think attacking Jose because he's more an offensive player. Lucas has shown he can play as a, as a, as a right wing offensive player, but he can also be a left, uh, a right back. Uh, so I think Lucas is a more, um, gives you more options. But if you're thinking about just the offense, I think Jose has more options because of the nature of his game. Uh, but I think, and this is one of the things I like, I think Zidane, is, is giving them a chance to both play. No? Yeah, Zidane is giving everybody a chance. In the first two games, we didn't see that much, but in the last three games, we've seen that Zidane is counting on everybody, and that's a smart thing to do, because, you know, we're gonna have to count on everybody right. to, to get our goals that are looking very far right. this year. Right, I mean, I think Jesse, definitely there's, there's obviously competition between players for the two, but they're not the same players. Jesse, to me, likes to go to goal. He does a little bit more tricks with his feet. Uh, more mm -hmm. direct player. Lucas Vasquez to me is a workhorse. That guy works on and off the ball. And if you're looking for someone to maintain the intensity, he's your man. I, I'm a big fan of him. But it's raining, so... I love Lucas Vasquez Galacticos. We need to leave right now because it's starting to rain. It's already raining. So uh, if you haven't liked or subscribed yet, you know what to do. I uh, will see you next week for more questions. Keep them coming and ask our G!